uh, reserve VM instances, more commonly known as reserved instances, are essentially a commitment you make to Azure. You are committing to a specific VM, uh, Azure VM in a specific region for a set amount of time. And in exchange of your commitment, you will receive a discount versus your pay-as-you-go pricing. Welcome back to the Azure Essential Show. I'm your host, Thomas. Today, we're talking about how to optimize your spend with Azure Reserve Virtual Machine instances, how to use Azure recommendations, and some potential pitfalls to avoid. And I'm joined by Priyanji with Azure. Welcome back to the show, Priyanji. Thank you for having me, Thomas. We know Azure Reserve Virtual Machine instances has been in the market for a while now, but can you briefly describe the basic of how it works? Yeah, so Azure uh, Reserve VM instances, more commonly known as reserve instances, are essentially a commitment you make to Azure. You are committing to a specific VM, uh, Azure VM in a specific region for a set amount of time. And in exchange of your commitment, you will receive a discount versus your pay-as-you-go pricing. This is a great option for uh, predictable workloads. For example, let's say that a startup is building AI-powered learning app that personalizes content for students. To train and run their deep learning models, they use Azure's GPU VMs in East US. The startup expects steady usage for over the next few years. So they can choose to purchase the reserve instance, saving money while keeping the performance high. One thing to note is that RIs do strictly is a billing benefit. They do not impact actual runtime of the resources, and it does not guarantee capacity. Okay, so this is a great option for Azure customers. Do they need to identify ahead of time which VMs will be using for their Azure reservation? No, that's a great part about reserved instances. The discount automatically applies to any running VM that matches your reservation scope. So here it includes things like VM size and region. You don't have to manually assign it. Azure does that matching for you. I should also note that um, for um, Windows VMs, the reservation only covers compute cost. And these are billing benefits only, which means reservations do not impact the runtime of any running uh, resources. The software licensing is still billed separately. So for, for both Linux and Windows, it is the compute meter that gets the reservation discount. OK, got it. And I love that we make it very easy uh, for customers to actually take advantage of this. Uh, it would be great if all of our workloads were static, but we know that's not always the case. What happens if users need to scale up or down? Yeah, that's a great question. This is where instance size flexibility comes in. Your discount isn't locked to a single VM size. It can apply to of different VM sizes within the same group, as long as they are in the same region. Each VM size has an assigned ratio, and the ratio is used to identify which other VMs within the family um, the RI can apply to. For example, say you purchased a D8V5 VRI, this RI has a ratio of 8. This means that D8V5 RI could apply to two of D4V5 because they each have a ratio of 4. Or this D8V5 price could also apply to four of the D5v5 because each have ratio of two. So let's say someone is interested in taking advantage of this offer, but it's unsure how to actually start. How does Azure help customers to figure out what reservations they should actually buy? The short answer is that we try to do that work for you. Azure uses your historical usage data to make personal recommendation. It analyzes which VMs you're running more consistently and for how long. Then we suggest VM sizes, quantities, and terms. You'll see these recommendations directly in the reservation purchase flow or through tools like Azure Advisor. Enterprise customers can also surface recommendations via API or even Power BI content packs for a cross subscription visibility. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. So, can you give us an example for this? Absolutely. So, we are heading over to reservations page and I select virtual machines. You'll see uh, different options for recommendations. Um, and then I've selected recommendations based on 30-day usage. Now you can see the details, and it will give you more details on why we are recommending and what we are recommending. It might take a few seconds. And then you can see 
uh, the number of savings, uh, the amount of utilization, and so on. It's a great tool to get an understanding of what you should purchase. All right. So before users take advantage of this, what should they know? Are there any best practices you want folks to keep in mind? Yeah. So this is a great benefit from Azure. Um, but I do want to highlight a couple of things. First of all, leverage Azure Advisor or the purchase flow to see recommendations based off your historical usage. You can select 7, 30, or 60 day usage. Before purchasing any reservation, see if the recommendations to right size or turn off any VMs to prevent any unnecessary purchases. This can also be found in Azure Advisor. Then set up RI utilization alerts to get proactive notifications if your utilization goes below a certain percentage. And then turn on auto renewal so that you don't get unexpected charges when your reservations expire. Ensure to review the RI scope as well before you renew. Awesome. I mean, I'm myself are, I'm a fan of a huge fan of Azure Advisor, um, not just for costs, but also for other things like security. So is there anything else users should keep in mind? I think a lot of people have questions. What if uh, they purchase a reserved instance and it is not being fully utilized? What are your options? There are a few things can, someone can do in this situation. First of all, you can change the scope at any given time. So it can cover larger sets of VM in your environment. Or you can also trade in your RIs for savings plan. Savings plan provide much more flexibility than an RI and can cover more compute services. Or you can also exchange the RI to a different region or a series that you may be using. Oh, that's some really good things to know. Um, so obviously, people are now interested. And for the people who are watching, uh, what is the best place to start? Yeah, so we have a number of resources at Microsoft Learn that walk you through how to purchase and monitor your RIs. We also have posted a series of video that talk about reservations. They're specific to other services, but the general concepts of reservations or RIs applies to them as well. Awesome. So this is great information. I know that many of our viewers will appreciate finding ways to optimize their costs without sacrificing performance or scalability. Thank you for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You can find links to everything we discussed today in this episode description. Also, don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments. Let us know if you have used reserved instances and how your organization benefited. And give our show a like and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when a new episode drops. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on the Azure Essentials Show. Thank you.